Hi folks, let's have a look and see what was new on Netflix from the 30th of November to the 6th of December. First up on Netflix this week is Men in Black 3, the better sequel to Men in Black. Whilst it doesn't exactly reinvent the wheel, it's, uh, it's much more enjoyable than that horrible Men in Black 2 film they put out a couple of years ago. Josh Brolin really makes this film watchable by doing an impeccable Tommy Lee Jones. It's actually funny this time, the special effects are top notch, and there's a little bit of a heartwarming moment, some may disagree, toward the end of the film that keeps everything nicely tidy. Bachelorette makes a return to Netflix. This looks somewhat like Bridesmaids, with uh, Kirsten Dunst, James Marsden, Isla Fisher, Adam Scott, and Rebel Wilson. This is about a single overachiever who learns that a girl that she teased at high school is getting married before her. She swallows her pride to serve as maid of honour. Good cast, but sounds hokey. Crime Control is a reality crime series following the Indian authorities as they as they investigate prominent cases. Kevin and Perry Go Large is back on Netflix, starring Harry Enfield and Kathy Burke. Never before was there a more disappointing big screen adaption of a hilarious comedy duo. I saw this in high spirits and I laughed once. Oh boy, was it woeful. Classic Disney kids film Bed Knobs and Broomsticks starring Angela Lansbury appears in time for Christmas. British comedy Starter for Ten starring James McAvoy appears about a Bristol University freshman who develops a crush on a winsome co-ed and tries to win her heart by scoring a big victory on a game show. A bit like University Challenge, I guess. In a very merry Christmas, Bill Murray rounds up an all-star cast for an evening of music, mischief, and barroom camaraderie in this irreverent twist on the holiday variety show. I know a lot of people are excited about this. I am too. I'm looking forward to sitting down and watching this a little bit closer to Christmas. It's a Boy Girl Thing, a British comedy, returns to Netflix about a visit to a natural history museum that causes a catastrophic problem for two teen rivals when an ancient statue casts a spell that causes them to switch bodies. I can't imagine this being terribly good at all, however it gets quite good ratings. Cuba Gooding Jr. stars in Disney's Snow Dogs about a Miami dentist who tracks to Alaska to claim his inheritance that turns out to be a team of sled dogs and he ends up entering an arctic circle dog sledding tournament. Whilst I like Cuba Gooding Jr., I don't think I could possibly bring myself to watch this. The end of the Mayan civilization anchors this all-action adventure epic set just before Spain's conquest of Mexico and Central America in Mel Gibson's Apocalypto. Additionally, Mel Gibson helms this controversial epic that focuses on the last treacherous 12 hours of Jesus Christ's life in the Passion of Christ. In The Butterfly Effect, Ashton Kutcher plays a college student who's besieged by tragic memories and discovers a way to alter his past. This is a cracking psychological thriller, and if you didn't know, there was actually a second one that they made, and that's now available to watch on Netflix. And in case you didn't know again, there is a third one. The latter two I have not seen, however, based on the strength of the first one, I would very much like to see them, and they're here on Netflix for us all to enjoy, provided you have a subscription. Mr. Magorum's Wonder Emporium is a special effects fest starring Dustin Hoffman and Jason Bateman, alongside, I think it was Natalie Portman as well. I went to see this in the cinema and can remember very little about it. It's about a toy shop owner who is really old and um, is about to die or something, so he passes it over to one of the employees. Outpost 2 is the second of the Outpost trilogy. Uh, the first outpost being a rather superior British horror film. I haven't seen this second one yet, or indeed the third, however I will be watching. I did like the first one very much. This is about two Nazi chasers who team up with a special forces unit, unit who team up with a special forces unit to track down a World War II era machine that rendered Nazi soldiers invincible and immortal. 
Now I think about it a little more, I have seen the second one, and it's very good. Whilst not being a full-on horror horror movie, there is a decent amount of action to keep you entertained throughout. Precious is an independent drama about a teen called Precious who has an unexpected chance at a different life when she rules in an alternative school. She was viciously abused by her parents as a child. Features Mariah Carey, Lenny Kravitz, and a bunch of other poppy star type things and gets uh, pretty good reviews across the show. I don't know if this is a biopic or something of a musical personality called Precious, but it's from 2009 and sounds kind of interesting. Push is an action-adventure sci-fi about a telekinetic fella and a clairvoyant chick who join forces to find a psychic who can help them destroy a shadowy agency called The Division. Still Alice is a drama based on a best-selling novel. The film stars Julianne Moore and Alec Baldwin about a happily married linguistics professor with three children who's diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease that very much disrupts her career and family life. Transporter 3 is an action adventure starring Jason Statham, third in the Transporter series and the least thought of of the bunch. This installment of the action franchise sees the mercenary driver Frank Martin take on the task of delivering important cargo once again with no questions asked. We Were Soldiers is a solid action adventure set in the Vietnam War that tells the story of the Battle of La Drang, which pitted 450 US soldiers against thousands of well-armed Vietnamese troops. Mel Gibson leads, and it also features Sam Elliott, Greg Kinnear, Madeline Stowe, and Chris Klein. What Women Want was a very successful comedy in 2000, starring Mel Gibson and Helen Hunt, about a kooky advertising executive who finds he can suddenly hear what women are thinking. He puts his newfound talent to work against his female boss. I will go as far to say that Mel Gibson is almost perfect in this, and his charm and charisma really dominates the screen in every scene. All eight seasons of How I Met Your Mother are available to watch now, a very popular American sitcom that has been running for years about a bloke's epic search to find his soulmate, told largely through flashbacks as an adult, as he recounts to his kids how he, well, met uh, their mother. Comedy about a movie star dog called Rex, who is out of his element when he gets lost far from home, but a boy and a team of firefighters give him a true sense of belonging in a firehouse. Starring Bruce Greenwood and Bill Nunn. Ever wonder why Eddie Murphy's career is in tatters? Well, here's an example. Meet Dave is a slapstick comedy about an alien who is ingeniously disguised as a human, but is actually a vessel, and on board are a crew of miniature extraterrestrials who land on Earth looking to save their planet. What Happens in Vegas is a romantic comedy starring Cameron Diaz, Aston Kutcher, Treat Williams, and Dennis Farina, about a night of heavy partying in Vegas, where two strangers wake up and realise, much to their displeasure, that they've gotten married. An idea that has been done to death, and I'm sure done better and worse over the years. Scary Movie 3, the, thir the completely unnecessary third instalment, loses the Wayans Brothers and David Zucker takes over, uh, featuring Pamela Anderson, Leslie Nielsen... Anna Farris, George Carlin, Charlie Sheen, Jenna McCarthy, Denise Richards. Why are all these people attached to such a poor film? <sighs> well, I don't know. I, I can't believe they continue to, to make these things. From utter crap to utter amazement, City of God uh, is a crime drama about a boy growing up in a Rio de Janeiro slum and getting drawn into the life of drugs and crime by having a passion for photography. Ella Enchanted is a kid's fantasy about Ella who is burdened with the gift of obedience by her fairy godmother and her search for a way to lift the curse that prevents her from pursuing her dreams. The sixth season of Vampire Diaries has arrived. Teenage girls rejoice. Stand-up comedian Brent Moran has his own witty solo show called I'm Brent Moran. There's an independent thriller called The Chosen, 
In order to save a young girl from a child-stealing demon, her mother and 19-year-old uncle must select six other blood relatives for a deadly sacrifice. Dealer is an action-adventure about a small-time drug dealer who hopes for one last big score that will send him towards his new life, but the next 24 hours will propel him into a dark, terrifying path. Looks pretty good. Uh, it doesn't get great reviews, however it might be. Have a little bit of decent entertainment. I Am Big Bird, the Carol Spinney story, is the story of the man inside two of Sesame Street's most iconic characters, Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch. Particle Fever is a science documentary about the creation of the Higgs boson particle, an elusive key to unlocking the secrets of the universe, and the story that unfolds on camera in this landmark documentary. Pocketful of Miracles is Frank Capra's final directing effort about a bag lady, Apple Annie, who convinces her long-absent daughter that she's a wealthy socialite. The daughter, who grew up in Europe, plans a trip with her aristocratic fiancé and his family to visit Annie. The Town That Dreaded Sundown is a same-name follow-up to a classic 70s slasher that is based on the true legend of a hooded serial killer that terrorised a small town. Decades after the Moonlight Murderer terrified Texarkana, the mayhem begins again, and a lone teenager may be the key to the killer's capture. A Royal Christmas is a festive family film starring Jane Seymour. When the heir to the throne of Cordinia brings his commoner American girlfriend home to meet the family, the mother schemes to end the relationship. Stinks of Hallmark. Atelier is a TV show directed by Ryan Gosling about a young fabric geek who lands a job at an upscale Japanese lingerie company and quickly discovers she'll need help to survive. Garage Band is a new TV ki kids show about Corey and his best friends who will do anything to make their garage band a success. But his scheming older sister is determined to crush their dreams. Lost River is a sci-fi fantasy film directed by Ryan Gosling about the rotting remains of a once great city and the struggling single mother who is forced to take a job in a bizarre cabaret to keep her house and kids. Max Steel is a new kids TV show about a teen with superpowers called Turbo Energy that joins a secret organization to prevent the evil transhuman industries from taking over the world. Men at Work is an action comedy with Emilio Estevez and Charlie Sheen about two garbage men with big dreams who become embroiled in a mystery when they discover a dead body in a load of trash and attempt to sniff out the killer. I haven't seen this, I've always wanted to, and I'll be watching it tonight. On Angel Wings is a British kids festive movie about an eight-year-old Rachel whose grandfather tells her the story of a young shepherd's wondrous flight with the angel Gabriel to witness a Christmas miracle. A Good Kill is a military drama starring Ethan Hawke and the lovely January Jones about Tommy Egan, a pilot of an armed drone over Afghanistan, and the remote nature of his work that begins to raise moral questions in his life. Real Rob is a brand new TV show that goes inside the world of the actor and comedian Rob Schneider that follows the ups and downs of his career and family life. Looks pretty good. I quite like Rob Schneider, so I'll give this a go. Walk of Shame looks like a pretty terrible comedy uh, starring Elizabeth Banks. However, my wife has watched it a number of times, stating it hilarious. The Watchmaker's Apprentice is a documentary about two of the world's most skilled watchmakers, their intricate work and their passion, devotion, and their symbolic relationship, starring John Rhys Davis. A Woman Like Me is a documentary about an author facing terminal cancer diagnosis that weaves together a documentary about her struggle with a fictional version of the same story. Big Ballet is a British TV show from Peter Hyams about a plus-size amateur ballet dancer auditioning and training with pros to fulfil her childhood dreams to break one of ballet's traditional barriers, body size. Christmas Wedding Baby is a comedy drama 
about a woman who's about to marry her workaholic fiancé, however the bride-to-be discovers that her wedding photographer is her ex-boyfriend, and he has been hired to capture the nuptials. Enemies Closer is an action-adventure starring Jean-Claude Van Damme and Tom Everett Scott. This is actually pretty good, although Jean-Claude Van Damme's comical blonde hair does somewhat ruin it. The action is tight, the scenery is spectacular, and the film does not overstay its welcome. It's good fun. Hot Tub Time Machine 2 is the sequel that loses John Cusack from the franchise and adds Adam Scott in his place. Still keeping Chevy Chase, mind you. Five years after their original adventure, Jacob and Nick try to go back in time to stop a man who shot Lou, but they end up in the future instead. Short Lego superheroes movie Batman B. Leaguered is a charming animated tale about Superman and the other Justice League superheroes who start disappearing, and it's up to Batman to unravel the caper and save the day. Another Jason Statham actioner, this time Wild Card, set in Vegas. When his friend is raped, freelance tough guy and gambling junkie Nick tracks down the creep, but unwittingly stirs up a wrath of a pitless mob boss. Say what you like about these Jason Statham movies, they are surefire entertainment for a Friday night. And my pick of the week is Kevin Costner crime thriller, No Way Out. After having a steamy affair with a politician's mistress, a Navy officer finds himself caught in a conspiracy web when she turns up dead. Also stars Gene Hackman and Sean Young. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. It's a good old-fashioned Russian-type thriller, with Gene Hackman as a strong support and Kevin Costner in one of his most enjoyable leading man roles. Well, thanks for watching, and remember to check out what's new on Amazon.